All right, awesome guys. We're now live out on the internet and we're gonna share today with my man Ron. What's up, Ron? How's it going? Good man. Uh, Ron actually works and he helps a lot of uh, marketers and, and business owners that are out there wanting to market their businesses off of Facebook. Um, and he helps them actually bring in and they write in big checks for it. <laughs> That's about right. Wait, yeah. How did how did you get started with that? Because I mean, I knew you didn't roll out of bed one day. And you're like, oh, this is what I'm going to do for a living. Uh, I'm sure there's some tried tribulations, some growing pains and stuff like that that kind of went along. What was the first entrepreneur story you remember as a kid? Oh man, first entrepreneur story I remember as a kid would have been when I was in high school. I was selling, uh, importing. This is like before, this is when dropshipping or whatever you want to call it from China was first new. Uh, I had a friend of mine that was, that was older friend of mine that was helping me import pocket bikes and I would sell them to school. That was one of the, like we were getting them for, I think it was like 50 to hundred bucks back then. And I was selling them for 300 to 450 inside, inside high school, making a decent profit at 14, 15 years old. So you, you imported pocket books. Pocket and bikes. What was it bikes? Bikes. Yeah. Those little, you know, those little crotch rocket pocket bikes. Okay. So you yeah. imported the, the bikes and then, yeah. You said crotch rocket like bikes, like the like Kawasaki like little, bikes or like little, like little pocket bikes. Like what's what we called them in high school. They're like, I don't know, they'd be like three and a half, four feet long and like two feet off the ground. And you just like rip around them. Oh, okay. So the yeah. bikes that you could ride on, but they weren't like, um, they weren't like huge bikes. They were just kind of like small bikes in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Very small bikes. Were, yeah. You imported those from where? From China, we didn't import them from China. Crates at a or, yeah, crates at a time, and then I started with like I think we originally started with ten to see if we could sell them, and they sold in the first like three days that I had them, and then we just started bringing in crates at a time. Got it. And and where yeah. where I mean, where who was buying them? I mean, like where did like, high school? I was just literally in high, I had one, and then people just kept asking me like, where do I get them? Where do I get them? And it was just like I really ride around school, create a big ruckus, create a big uh noise about it and people i get in trouble from teachers but it was helping me get the attention that i needed uh so marketing 101 get attention uh and got the attention that i needed and people just kept buying them left right and center and then it just kind of went from one school to another school then there's like all over my city people started knowing about me and i started selling way more than that so you rode through high school and like the so i tell you you weren't attending class right <laughs> no, definitely wasn't in, in, in between <laughs> classes you're riding your Mo little mini motorcycle through the school and all the kids were getting the buzz about it. That's yeah. like some guerrilla marketing right there. <laughs> that legitimately was guerrilla marketing back in the day. That was my first, I think, right off the top of my head, entrepreneurial adventure that I personally did. So it was pretty awesome. So, so you did that adventure and then like, why did you stop? What changed? Uh, well, what actually caused a big, uh, big change in that whole business model was in Vancouver where I live, uh, the truckers went on strike. So when we had crates that would come in, we had one crate stuck at a port for just under three months and wow. people were getting like pissed off and all that good stuff. And then it just kind of literally killed the entire buzz about it and trying to get it back going again. It was close to like fall, uh, fall, winter here in Vancouver. So by that point in time, people, really really didn't to get back to, uh, people didn't really care about wanting to ride the bikes. And then after that, I was like, all right, trying to find something else. And then one after another, just kept on going with different, uh, with different adventures. So you started the bike business, riding through the school, grill marketing style, and then there was a supply and demand issue that came up. Yeah. That's a big lesson you probably learned that day, huh? <laughs> Definitely a big lesson because I already pre-sold a bunch. So I'd like people were like waiting for it. And like I ended up having to do my first like first few refunds because we couldn't get the bike out. And then once they went, once we finally got it out, then we ended up realizing, realizing that we could sell them because of time of year. And then we literally ended up just having to offload them for dirt, dirt cheap. But we made enough money in the summer that it was it was good enough to good enough to call it a good successful first venture. That's awesome, man. So first business rolled out, riding the bikes, made the money. What did you do with the money? What did I do with the money? I went and invested and bought my first car. I was uh, just before I, right after I got my license with it. Nice. So you yeah. bought your first car with the money from selling the motorcycle bikes. Yeah. And then that was how many years ago now? That would have been, I would have been in grade 10. So 10? That's a long time ago. Yeah, probably 12 plus years ago. Yeah. Wow. And it's about 12 years ago. And then since doing that, how many other entrepreneur journeys have you been on? 
Um, I have done, what have I done? I've sold knives, uh, door to door, sold, um, gas contracts door to door. I've done, uh, in-home selling for a software company that was an entrepreneur adventure kind of, but it was part of a company. Uh, and then from there, what else have I done? Um, and then pretty much got into marketing at you know, about four or five years ago doing affiliate marketing and then eventually to the agency world. Cool. So you, you started out doing that. You went through, what was the, the biggest lesson you say? Like that, the one that finally, like you learn and you finally stepped into where you're at today and, and got you to success. Like that's what everybody wants to know. They want the shortcut to success. I, I want to get there as fast as possible. You know, if you could tell somebody one thing today, where were you at that point? And where was that initial, like, where was the lowest, lowest, low point as you're going through on this journey where yeah. you're like, man, I was like, I don't know if I could do this anymore. Yeah. So my lowest, lowest, low point was when I was with my last sales job that I was at and um, doing really well for for a young 20 something year, 22 year old. And I realized that I mastered the art of sales and sales was more one to one and I was getting forward. Um, and for me, it was one of those things was like, Hey, what am I going to do? Cause I didn't really see myself being there forever. Uh, and that's when I kind of started to dabble in the whole online space. And I got a random email from the, the mastermind that I went and paid. And I literally had like, I think it was a few thousand bucks off my bank account. And I committed to going to this mastermind just in LA and it drained my entire bank account. That was the lowest point I ever was to go learn paid traffic. And go and uh, went out there and messed five k. Went out and paid traffic. So this is I'm just like shortcutting the entire thing because you guys want to know shortcut um, is what I believe in is if you want to really shortcut your success is learn from the best and do it immediately. Invest right away because if you don't, it's going to take you a long freaking time. Because before I'd invested all of that, I had you know spent thousands of dollars on courses, but never actually got the best information or got the best training that I ever needed. And then came back from that and just, you know, went out and just hustled hard to build the, uh, build the company that I have today. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just an investment that you made in the course. It was investment you made in yourself. Yeah. A hundred percent. That's one of the key takeaways I would say for anybody listening to this is like making sure you're investing into yourself and something that's going to give you an ROI. Yeah. Without a doubt. Invest in yourself is one thing. Like if I could turn my, my, my computer right now, you'd say I mean, probably, you know, easy 150 books that read, I've, that I've read over the years just from like when I started getting into it and every single book has got me one step closer to where I am. That's all invested in myself. Yeah. hundred percent. So the bottom line is number one guys is like, be willing to take the risk and invest into yourself. And even when that's all you got left, like that's the people who make those type of investments I've seen over and over again, including myself, have been the place where they've gotten the biggest return. hundred percent. Yeah. And that, that course that you learned doing traffic at, how old were you then? I would have been 20 through 24 at that point. 24 at the time. So you're 24 years old. You'd already, unquote, mastered the art of sell, selling, right? Selling one-on-one, right? Yeah. You, you had started your businesses in the past. You've, you've yeah. done the door-to-door -door stuff, all that stuff. How was it that traffic really set you free at that point? The, the one thing that uh, traffic set me free was what I realized getting into the marketing and when I was an affiliate prior to all that, while I was selling was I realized in sales, everything's traffic, right? When I did door to door, uh, the whole point is you had to create your own traffic. So it's like, you had to go knock on doors, 110 plus doors a day and work your numbers down to get your one to two sales. And then I realized, and I, once I started to understand what traffic really was in the online space, I was like, well, I get it here. I just need to master this and I'll figure the rest out eventually. And that's the reason why we, I, you know, decided to go and master traffic. And since then we've created the traffic agency that we run today. Boom. Just like that. So you're able to take your old school, you took the metaphor of door to door salesperson knocking on the doors to get that revenue of like, I'm going to, I'm going to have a hundred people. I'm going to get in front of them and make two sales. Yep. Right? And you took that same mindset, except now you took it online and instead of trading, you know, time for money, now you're trading money for time. Because you can turn around and purchase a hundred doors like in a split second on Google or Facebook or any of these places that are out there you're working with right now running your traffic shop. Yeah, absolutely. You couldn't have said it any better. It's like just trading the money for time versus me knocking and spending eight hours a day knocking those doors. Yeah. Tell us about some of the success stories you've had from some of your clients since you started doing that. Uh, some of the success stories we've had, we've taken clients on where, you know, they were getting... $500 per cost for applications. And we've taken it down to $50 or less cost for applications. 
um, in different fields. So it's not like in the MMO space, in the weight loss space, in different niches. Uh, the one thing we did last year that was actually pretty epic was we took a client of ours and we took them into Asia, into Taiwan, uh, running events and also and then also do and then also taking the products and launching them in Taiwan and getting like three dollar applications for or cost register uh, for their event and then also webinar registrations that you could only dream of getting over here. Wow, that's exciting. Yeah. So so let me let me make sure this is broken down Barney style for anybody that's listening to this. Is yeah. basically what he did was he took something that was normally somebody to spend five hundred dollars for, and you're yeah. able to get it all the way down to. to Fifty dollars, so Lord. that's like a huge difference. So somebody's spending ten dollars now, they're spending one for the yeah. same amount of advertising to get somebody to fill out an application, which is one of those applications people are filling out because they want to work with that person individually. And I'm assuming that's a coach or that's a business that's out there selling a product or service. That yeah. you, that's, a, lot that's them, a lot of them were really, a lot of them were coaches um, in different realms, uh, NLP coaches in. We've had uh, real estate investment coaches, make money coaches, all that kind of stuff, um, or even weight loss stuff. So like, that's the kind of stuff like, you know, the application costs online today, everybody looks at, okay, what is my application cost? Cause that's what they're going to scale their ad spend with. And when you can take someone and literally cut it from 500 to 50, your ad spend can go a lot farther with that exact same amount of money that they're spending on the 500. hundred percent. What are some yeah. of the biggest mistakes you see people making out there right now online when they're doing, when they're doing paying for traffic? Uh, some of the biggest mistakes that I see is people aren't going, they aren't actually thinking of who their avatar is. Number one, we take on ad accounts all the time and we just look at it and you're like, wow, this guy is just. Completely- when you say avatar for somebody listening to this, describe yeah. what an avatar is to them in case so they don't. Uh, the simplest way to explain an avatar is figure out who your person exactly is. You know, what are they thinking in their head? What did they wear? What did they eat? Uh, what are their interests? Like getting to the, literally to the, uh, as granular as you can to understanding the person. Now, if you're selling someone like yourself, I was selling myself as an avatar and I wanted to know what would be my fast track to success. If we go back to the previous question, where was I when I wanted that? And Mm -hmm. think about that and write every single thing down because that is the person that you're targeting. And that's the person, that's your customer you're talking about. That's your customer we're talking about. Customer client, yeah. Yeah. And then one of the other big things that we notice in there in people when, you know, when people are doing Facebook ads, YouTube ads, whatever it is, is they don't, they aren't as granular in their campaigns and they aren't getting the correct data. They're so broad that they're like, Oh, let's just take spaghetti and throw it at the wall and hope it sticks. Mm-hmm. What happens when you throw spaghetti at the wall? Oh, a lot of times it doesn't stick too well. <laughs> it just makes a big old mess. <laughs> yeah, it definitely does. <laughs> My kids used to do that. It was a mess everywhere. So yeah, yeah they're <laughs> making uh, cakes today. So that was fun. It's all over uh, now. Yeah, <laughs> come clean my kitchen up. It's a mess right now. <laughs> number, good, right? number two is no spaghetti against the wall, right? Yeah. And, and number one is no shotgun approach to marketing. Don't not go shotgun approach because all you're going to do, Facebook, you know, Zuckerberg loves getting richer and richer every day. So you just, if you go shotgun approach, you're just putting more money in his pocket at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah. Mark Zuckerberg He's, loves it. So he just yeah. loves it. Yeah. Yeah. What, makes- what's the, what's the third, third thing that you're seeing people are doing out there? Just, they're they're missing the mark. They're just blowing cash, and then don't even realize it. Uh, the third thing that I is making sure you're actually tracking your data, um, pixeling your pixeling everything that you do correctly. Uh, the one thing that we do, you know, my business partner uh, Matt, who runs a lot of our back end for us, he pretty much like he's a pixeling machine. Like the guy will literally go out and pixel every single thing and track. So it's like anytime we take a client on, we can see right from the time we saw the ad or clicked the ad all the way to the time of purchase. And we can exactly tell you which ad converted all the way down based on each pixel that we go. So it's like making sure you track, because if you are tracking and being analytical, I know a lot of people, I myself aren't the most analytical person, but being analytical with, especially if you're spending your own money, you may as well know what you're spending it on. Know, know your numbers, you know, whether it's sales one-to-one, you're knocking on a hundred doors, you're going to get two. You yeah. got to know your numbers the same as you do in person, as you do online. Yeah. Those are three hard takeaways. Now, I want you to discuss that you saw the, the God's the Internet, the summit we have coming up right now, right? Yeah, what definitely. Thoughts, what were your thoughts when you first saw that? I was absolutely blown away, man. The lineup that you've got for the gods of the internet was, I haven't seen a summit in a long time. Like we briefly chatted prior to this and I said, you know, we run, uh, we helped put together a summit recently and it was good, but nothing as good as this. So I want to kind of, you know, take some time and kind of get your insight and uh, pick your brain a little bit or however you want to call it on, you know, why did you create the summit? 
Well, my biggest thing was I was talking with my mentors, uh, Matt Bazak, and we were having a conversation. And Matt said to me, he's like, listen, I was like, you've gone out and you've helped all these people and they've made all this money and, you know, they've, they've crushed it in business. They've turned the business around, turned their lives around in so many different areas. I was like, he was like, why don't you just bring those people out to the market so they can learn more about you and what you're doing and also position them as being the experts in the field that they are. And I was like, wow, that makes sense. I was like, you know, and Matt's a, Matt's a, he has a mentorship program and the private coalition that's I'm a part of. And uh, I, I go to meetings there on a regular basis, just like you invested in the, the group you went to in California. We go down to Atlanta, get together and yeah. I get around these amazing entrepreneurs. And it's like, a, it's like a parallel universe. It's yeah. kind of crazy. I mean, like I, I kind of pinch myself half the time because my friends, they'll, they'll see me now at this point, you know, and they've, they've seen me from those ups and the downs. I never sold knives, you know, but I sold yeah. a lot of stuff yeah. and uh, they just remember me from, from that guy. And it's one of those things of like, they'll see me at a football game now. And they're like, dude, you just came back from Cuba. And I'm, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I was like my buddy, John, like, he's amazing. He set the whole thing up, invited me to come and everything. And I, thanks John for, for having me, you know? Yeah. And he's, he's like, he's like, yeah, well, it's like, how are you doing this? I was like, well, it's what I do for a living. You know, it's like, you know, it's like, this is how I would do business, you know? And they're yeah. like, you were just in Las Vegas. I was like, yeah, I was working. I was like, <laughs> I was like, where do you go to work? You know, they're like, well, I go to my job in Washington, DC and I fight with traffic. Yeah. I was like, well, I get on an airplane and fly and hang out with, you know, just amazing entrepreneurs like Jason Myers, you know, who's going to be talking about guerrilla marketing. Uh, and guerrilla marketing is actually like, when I say guerrilla marketing, like people know that term because there's like a book series about it and he owns the rights to the whole thing and all the users and all that stuff. It's a whole community that's basically built out. I don't know how many books they have in the series and stuff, but he's going to be bringing on talking about how small business owners can use guerrilla marketing to basically grow their own brand and make sales. Uh, oh, awesome. I'm sitting here talking about me and Sean are talking about values uh, yeah. And what he does, you know, Sean Bosler, he works with guys like Ty Lopez, you know, guys like Sam Owens. Uh, these guys are just slaying it out there in the marketplace. Anthony Morrison, uh, a yeah. guy who sold a half billion dollars worth of stuff. You think he knows what he's talking about, right? So yeah, Sean yeah. literally takes people's businesses from seven figures to eight figures, you know, and he doesn't even, he, talking about his avatar, he doesn't, if you haven't done a million dollars worth of sales through your account, he don't want to talk to you. <laughs> not, not because- <laughs> He yeah. just knows that that's not his client, you know? Yeah. So he's, he's perfectly fine. He like has a great course. He's actually, everything he teaches these guys and everything he does for them, he's created a course around it, you know, and he's helping people out there. I've gone through it, learned a tremendous amount of information. Um, but, you know, how did I get around those type of people? It's the same way you did. You know, yeah. I invested into myself and a program and it's allowed me to, to help serve and, and serve people at the highest level. So I wanted to bring people together who are actually really doing stuff online who are really doing stuff in business, who are really helping people. Uh, the number one small business lender in the country for small business loans, over 30,000 loans, this woman's actually got funded. You know, she's wow. going to be on there. So if you need access to capital, you know, she has got a loan for up to $350,000 uh, that you can have uh, with unsecured debt. It means it doesn't have to be secured your car, your house, or anything like that. You got to have decent credit. Um, but you know, if, if you have business credit greater than two years, they'll go based off your business credit, if not your personal credit. Uh, and they're going to have a 10 year amortization for that. And she's going to go through the details about how to get access to that and what to do, what they're looking for. You know, if you're preparing to go talk to a bank even, or talk to her, like this is yes. what they're looking for to make sure you're good to do. So, you know, these are some real people making some real difference in the world. Yeah. Uh, it's not people that are just like, hey, they just saw something last week off of some, you know, program online and they're just turning around and trying to teach it to somebody. So, so it's, not like, it's not like the next big best hypey thing that's coming out. It's actually like people have done it, people that have gotten absolute massive results, because yeah. if they're not massive results, you can't really consider them gods of the Internet, which is like one of the things that got me thinking is like, how did you even come up with that name? Like that's that, that was actually that was that was that was Matt. Right. I always give credit where credit is due. Matt's like yeah. he's like. He's like, dude, he's like, why don't we do something around like Greek gods, you know? So it's like, let's do the, the mythology side of things, you know, the Greek mythology, and we yeah. can play off of that and create cool characters for everybody. And everybody loves it. They see their characters. I think Michael Devlin, I just saw, he was posted on his McLaren car in his driveway. <laughs> I, I just, saw that. Thing. It was pretty funny. I just bagged up laughing at that. And that somebody took his icon and put it on there. 
and uh, just a, one of the best guys. I mean, yeah. I met Michael through uh, my friend Carl, who's actually on the summit as well. Michael is amazing at doing FBA. Uh, he's had collectively with his group. I know he's literally has, he's also had a hell of a story. I, he's, he's got it from uh, this is like Bentley to bus ticket to back again. I mean, like literally that story. I mean, like literally from crushing it to losing everything to making it all back again. You know, and collectively, his group, has, he's done over $42 million himself in sales, but he's got collectively of a group who's done over $100 million that he's set month tour, you know, all through Amazon, like, you know, FBA type offers that are out there. So, uh, so Carl actually introduced me. He's the shark. Uh, yeah. literally, literally, there was a God who was a shark, believe it or not, right? And uh, Carl's got some amazing uh, platform that's coming out and it's surrounded around Shopify. So it's basically yeah. going to be like the click funnels for Shopify where you can really add more add more stuff to your cart. So, hey, if you bought this, you you actually should buy this too. You know, and it has, adds a lot of value to people's cart. And it's got a, a lot of other cool knickknacks and things that he'll be rolling out talking about and educating people on. Because when you're able to, to double your revenue from just doubling the, your shopping cart, you know, yeah huge difference in, in ROI as far as like getting a customer. So that's, oh, that's just some of the stuff that we got coming down the pike with people. So that's how we came up with it. You know, Matt put me up to it and uh, I was like, I'm, I'm big about following orders. You know, I'm like, all right, I got it. And I was like, just give me the order, Matt. So he gave me the order. Yeah. I was like, yes, sir. Just followed out the orders, being Marine and stuff, you know, I just yeah. kind of followed on. So I wanted to bring people that are really doing stuff that are passionate about it. Uh, similar to your, yourself, you know, I think next summit we'll definitely have you on there talking about how you're crushing it with the Facebook ads and helping people generate all this time revenue. So absolutely, but you know, talk about next time. Um, what the one thing is, what makes someone a god of the internet? Like, how would you, let's say, for example, you, you run this thing six months, a year from now, in the future, who knows when you're going to do it? Hopefully soon, because uh, these lineups are absolutely epic. Like, what makes someone qualify to be part of the gods of the internet? That's, that's a great question. So, and, and have a conversation, you know, with, with Matt a while back, we had this conversation about a year ago, we're sitting around the campfire type of deal. And uh, we were, we were hanging out in Alabama and uh, he's got a cool ranch there, like 200 acres. And we're sitting out there grilling burgers off the, uh, they got the big old, like, I think it was, it was like the 50 gallon drums type deal. We're yeah. making yeah. burgers and stuff. And we're sitting out there and we're just talking about business and life. And, and uh, we talked about, you know, there's people out there in life that are plastic and there's people out there are steel, right? And see, if I started asking you questions right now about marketing and, and what you know about like doing Facebook ads and all that kind of stuff, I could, I could ask you questions for the next three days, you yeah. know, and you'd be able to answer, you know, if you start asking me questions about that stuff, I get about probably six levels deep and then I'd probably run out of stuff to say. Right. And then I would, I would melt like plastic in that fire, you know, and, and that's the biggest thing. If when you're talking to somebody who's an expert in their field, that they've, they've done it themselves, they've, they've actually done it for other people and they're able to teach it to other people to go out and do for themselves. And they have massive results and a okay. slew of customers of doing it. Then that's somebody who really knows what they're talking about, you know? So we want to make sure it's like no kidding coming from the horse's mouth per se. Right. And, and literally it's like, all right, come. I was like, Hey, I put these guys together because, and, and woman together is because they've gone out there and they've done it not just once, twice, but they've been doing this for 10, 15, 20 years, you know, and these are people with reputations of doing the industry um, that have track records that are real people. I mean, I don't know how many programs, I mean, collectively you and I have probably both invested in that have just been garbage, you know? Fun. Yeah. Fun. Yeah, I mean, from yeah. from little ebooks to like yeah. courses to different stuff. And I had a, a gentleman I was talking to the other day. He invested in a course, ten thousand dollars, and then they disappeared after he gave them the money. You know, I had wow. I had I had one event I remember going to, and uh, it was this guy, and it was it was it was six hundred dollars I paid into this thing, and uh, at the event, and I got home, and then the guy was constantly talking about the launch, the launch, the launch. Well, the launch like. It's, I think it, I think the guy's still talking about it. it's been 10 years and they still haven't launched this, this unquote product. Yeah. The pitch was like really good, you know, but at the end of the day, it was just like non-existent because the guy didn't actually have a real product at the end of the day and it never worked. Yeah. Right. And I heard some people six months later talking about it, the same thing. I'm like, Oh my gosh, that's the same thing. I lost $600 on, you know? Wow. And it's like, I've, I've been there. Right. Yeah. And I've got another one for you. I remember buying into this thing. 
And it was another business. I think it was like six grand dropped all in all on this whole thing, built the whole business around it, wanted to do good, you know, et cetera. And just like the, the story the guy sold was a really good story, but I didn't have like collective proof that these people actually really went out and did what they did. And when yeah. I, I tried to go out and duplicate their efforts, I couldn't, you know, it, it was because they, it just didn't work, you know, yeah. so that's something to really look at. So these people who I'm bringing on, they've got a track record of reputation for, you know, somebody like Carl, I mean, like he knows what it is to, to do launches and get stuff out there in the market space. You know, you don't have million launches in a month without an issue, you know, and, and guys like Matt who have built, you know, you know, continuity programs, like small ones, $50,000 a month doing, I mean, like he knows how to build a list and, and generate cash off of it. So Absolutely. when you have somebody like that to ask questions and actually share their knowledge, I was like, get, get around the fire. Cause it's going to be a good one. This is going to be a good warm fire. And like, you know, that, that, that's, you couldn't have said it any better because at the end of the day, the whole term of, you know, gods of the internet is when, you know, talking about the courses that we've all bought that have been garbage over the years or eBooks or whatever it is, is look at someone's track record of what they've done versus just buying it because they say they can do something. And that's, that's something that I learned the hard way. And I'm sure you've learned the hard way a couple of times, as you mentioned, 600, 6,000, uh, hopefully it's not a 60,000 at the end of that one the next time. But, uh, uh, you know, go to that, like, tell us how, obviously, you know, God's the internet phenomenal. Cannot wait for it to come out. What, six days, seven days? How long? Yes, how far we're we going to do a launch uh, party on uh, Sunday, nine, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you'll have the okay. link for everything so you can share it with your group and everybody. Uh, yeah, and kick off where everybody's going to share what they're talking about, kind of yeah. share their subject, what their what secrets they're going to be sharing, uh, the, the cool stuff. So that's going to be uh, this Sunday at, uh, at 8, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 8 p.m. Eastern, so it's 5 yep. p.m. Then next week, it's going to run from Monday to Saturday. We're doing yeah. three webinars a day. It will be recorded because yeah. I wanted to make sure to give people the option to get that. And um, literally, I mean, like for one of these people just alone, like a John Limbacher, who charged $1,000 an hour to talk to him about business and SEO and stuff like that, like he's going to get on and talk and share what he actually knows. So, I mean, like you couldn't get any one of these speakers on without paying at least about that for an hourly rate you know, my, myself included, you know, I'm not going to yeah. go on and spend an hour helping somebody, you know, re, re, uh, reformat their mind basically around whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, I, I just helped a woman earlier today, like do that and it took me 30 minutes, you know, and, and something she's been dealing with her whole life since she was three years old, you know, wow. and now she, now she's able to go out and sell the way she wants to sell now at this point and make the money she wants to make because she doesn't have that little voice in her head anymore. That's, that's huge. Like, that in itself, if people don't understand like the value that you're bringing to this is absolutely phenomenal. Now, let's take a step back here. Obviously, you've done a phenomenal job of what you've done. You've brought these amazing people that you've got relationships with, which is huge because you've leveraged your relationships to create the summit. Um, now, how did you get started? Like, kind of give us a rundown. Like, where were you what, what did you to where you are today? Uh, maybe my audience would, would definitely be interested in that for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, me just like you, I mean, I had my entrepreneur story. You know, backdrop when I was a little kid, there was a there was a toy I wanted to get. And it was that mindset of like, hey, you know what? I was like, you wanted to get that money to get your car. Me, it was to get the toy. And my mom, yeah. she's like, I'm not going to help you. Right. Yeah. She's like, go talk to your dad. So my yeah. dad's like, hey, go, you know, you can go pull weeds this weekend. Right. And you get a yeah. penny per weed. Right. So the toy was like a hundred dollars. And I got like seven bucks in my my bank piggy bank at that point. Literally, I had a piggy bank, you know. Yeah. This is back when I was like seven. So long story short, kind of fast forward, I, I was able to raise the money to, to get the toy eventually. Uh, and it was that mindset and that belief that I've carried over to the rest of my life. You know, that's helped me in sports. It helped me in football. It helped me in the Marine Corps. It helped me in everything I do. It's just that one mindset belief of like, you know what, if I want it bad enough, I can have it. I just have to put in the work, yeah. you know, and, and staying focused on that one thing. So yeah. Along the way, I ended up um, going, in, going into the Marine Corps. Um, I graduated, went into the Marine Corps, became an officer. And what ended up happening was I didn't realize that when I left the Marine Corps, um, I, had, I had actually, I, I didn't realize this till even this Memorial Day when I counted the number of friends and the mentors and best friends who had played uh, college football even with uh, at the Naval Academy who had actually died it was around 29. It was 20, 29 people. When I started counting them up, I was like, holy cow. So subconsciously, like up here, you know, I didn't realize, but I had a lot of survivor's guilt, 
you know, yeah. and I had a lot of like post-traumatic stress around that. I used to get angry. Yeah. And I'm not a good person to be around. I'm angry, you know? <laughs> so, so I turn around and I, I long story short was I, I met a gentleman out in California. He helped me basically go back and um, detangle some of the things in my mind associated with the anger and stuff like that. And I started doing that to kind of help my Marines. And that's my sole purpose for doing what I do was it was, um, it was a lot of based around the NLP work, you know, I'm a master practitioner in that uh, timeline therapy, learn from the best in the world. My, my uh, trainer was basically trained by um, Richard Bandler. Uh, oh, yeah. Had James, Paul, uh, yeah. I think his son, uh, Matt James, you know, yeah. personally. So they're the best in the world. And, and, and Tom Cavanaugh was, is one of the best in the world as well. Uh, so he trained me. And then for about three years there, I'm Luke Skywalker. He's Yoda you know, help me basically train me and I'm going out, I'm serving, I'm helping people in my community. I'm helping strangers. I'm helping, uh, just putting my 10,000 plus hours, literally just serving on everybody, and anybody and became a really amazing, you know, what I do. And I, I never saw myself being the person in the chair. Even when I joined the mastermind I was a part of, I joined it because I wanted to get better at marketing, you yeah. know, and then it was to do a completely different business. And okay. that was the thing is, is sometimes you could be on a journey right now, and just to where you're at in your journey, just like you were selling knives, doing door to door that eventually led to you where you're at today. And yeah. you realize that you just woke up and you're like, man, this is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. You know, when you start getting all the arrows pointed in that direction, people are telling you, no, you're the guy. Yeah. Guess what? They're telling you that for a reason. Yeah. And make, make sure you receive that gift. And I see a lot of people, um, they, they're like, no, 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 no. Just like I was doing at that point. And what happened was me is I worked with this gentleman and it's all public record and stuff. And there, you can watch the videos online and stuff with Troy talking about this. And one of my brothers from another mother, Troy Olds, he came to my life and he was actually Russell Brunson's salesperson at the time. And he came to my life. I ended up helping him overcome some unsurmountable odds around money, relationships, uh, stuffy trauma, childhood trauma he dealt with as a kid and um, helped him deal with all that in, in one session. And when he came out of working with me on that, you know, I mean, he just starts, and the thing is, I don't know what people are dealing with. They're really going deep on the subconscious side of things. I'm just kind of there as a guide helping them. So yeah. once he came out of that, he was just kind of like, listen, he's like, you need to do this for a living. He's like, I want to tell you what I just dealt with because I know you don't know, but I was like, listen, you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. He's like, no, I want to tell you because this is how important it is. Because at this point in my life, it's just the past story. It's just some some old story that, you know, I have no feelings for whatsoever. And and began yeah. to kind of share with me about the stuff he went through. And I still didn't I still didn't believe my I I still didn't believe it that, that was like, okay, that was me now, right? I'm like, wait a minute, I'm the guy in the chair. I was like, wait a minute. I was like, no, that's me, right? And you, you could be out there too, sitting in this, listening yeah. to this, whether you're whether you're really good at helping somebody come up with their sales message, whether you're really good at helping generate traffic, whether you're really good at being that analytical person that's out there, start to recognize what your God-given gifts and the talents and abilities are. Recognize them within yourself. And also ask people that you know you work with, ask people that you respect, hey, what do you feel that I'm really good at? Yeah. You know, ultimately, like, what do you feel my true God-given gifts are? And the person's going to say, well, I think these things. And all of a sudden, you start getting consensus around this stuff. Yeah. And I looked at Troy and he's like, He's like, you are the guy. You need to be in the chair. Screw anything else you're doing right now. Put it all in the past and just do this. And I was like, yeah. I was like, people will pay me for this. He's, <laughs> he's like, he's like, hell yeah, they'll pay me. He's like, I've been dealing with this stuff since I was like a child, it's like 20, 30 years now. I was yeah. like, I've tried everything under the sun, but not until this day have I actually been able to talk about this stuff openly and I have no emotion whatsoever about it. Wow. That's, yeah. that's that's how I got started. And that week I had two people hire me. Uh, one of those guys went on to make uh, seven figures in the next 12 months after I worked with him uh, from basically zero to seven figures in his Stripe account. Uh, okay. You know, another lady launched a new business. She doubled her sales. Um, like off of one phone call I had with her, she doubled the amount she charged for services because she had a confidence thing going on. And uh, I can tell you story after story now at this point, they're just, you know, make well, your so. Yeah, so uh, you know that that story itself is phenomenal. Like, you know, makes kind of makes me get chills a little bit here. Um, and I want to we we got to jump on and get some more stories down the road. But what is one of the coolest stories, like outside of that, that you could share? You know, that would be would would blow some people's minds, or you know, or in a way where it's just like, wow, I didn't even expect that kind of thing. Well, 
I'll, I'll tell you a couple because there's a couple of different avenues. Um, one of which was um, I had the opportunity. I was actually showing Matt Bazak around. I work with Matt and I help him really change his life a lot. And uh, he actually could not bring himself to tell his story out there um, in the public. And we were at an event later that year. And uh, before then, though, I ran into um, I was I played football at the Naval Academy and I can see patterns within people just by watching them play. And there was this gentleman named uh, Keenan Reynolds and Keenan Reynolds was an awesome, phenomenal quarterback. He had actually um, he broke a few records at this point, but he hadn't really stepped up to that level that he could be playing at. You know, there was that there was that small see in a game of like a football or the Olympics and something like that. There's this small difference between you and everybody else, yeah. you know, and the further you make it up the, the league to the NFL. Now at this point, it's even a smaller degree of difference. And that's the degree of difference that I help basically when I work with people get them. And um, one of the, one of the coolest stories I have is um, David Arsano called me earlier this year. And um, he was, he was having some stuff that happened to him, like trauma wise and his family had just lost his grandmother. super close with his daughter. had been in an accident, things of this nature. Um, and he's one of the guys on the summit. He's helped me put the whole thing on. He's phenomenal. He's done over five uh, click funnel campaigns that have done over seven figures from scratch. Uh, I mean, the guy's done over 60 funnels in the past year for people. He's so busy. It's crazy. Um, he's been instrumental with making all this work. So I got to give props to David. And um, David was a little bit of a slump, you know, just like you hit a major league player gets in a slump. So I get on the phone with David. We have a conversation uh, and, and he couldn't even, he even said to me, I can't, I, I don't even see myself selling tomorrow. I, I don't even feel passionate about doing anything. Sure. And, and uh, I, I, I work my mojo. And the next day he went out and sold uh, $886,000 worth of coaching services uh, to an audience. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then for Keenan That's Reynolds, awesome. he went on to break 14 NCAA records that year, finished as an all American voted by, you know, uh, what a consensus sports all American was a uh, fifth in the Heisman. That's the football trophy. And then did, um, cause I know you're in Canada. So, and then he placed, uh, he was the collegiate athlete of the year for, for like all of sports. And, and then for, um, for Matt, just to watch him later that year, give his presentation in front of a room of all his peers, colleagues, 500 people probably there. And to share his story about how he finally broke through and give me credit for helping them, like that feels really good. So when, when I when I see people having that type of success and realize that I could just play a small part in their success, that's what I really enjoy because all those all those individuals have the ability to really level up the team, you know, and the and the people they surround themselves by. So it's like a you know it's that pebble you throw into a pond and these ripples just go out. You know, and they continue to go out. So it's like I could have an effect on somebody like a Matt who can go out and affect Lord knows how many people online, you know, thousands of people, you know, to be able to share his message and help communicate his value to the marketplace. Or somebody like a David who's going to go out there and that investment these people made are going to make them 10x the amount of money they made in from their services. You know, and that's what he's done. He's literally, he's taking people from making 25000 at an event to making $750,000 at an event. You know, I mean, like that's that's the difference. So when you when you play and you're able to have an, a profound effect on that with individuals, that's what really gets my rocks off personally, and that's why I enjoy doing what I do. And it, you can clearly tell because it's like you know the stories come very very close. You come from a point of just absolutely wanting to give, and that's I guess why people also trust you so much too. Because man, that that's absolutely absolutely phenomenal. Now, uh, you know, I want to end this off on on somewhere where like where can people like what's the number one thing and why people should be coming to the gods of the internet. Uh, let's end it off with that. And I'll let you kind of just, you know, ride it through. Yeah. The, the reason that people should be coming is if they want to level up their life and their business, okay. you know, if, if you, if you're sick and tired of hearing about 10 X your business, 10 X your business, you know, I was like, guess what? We're not actually singing anything. We're actually doing it. We're actually giving you clear cut action steps on how to do that. You know, whether it's about traffic or whether it's about list building or how to get your mind right. You know, I'm going to do a live session with everybody that I normally just have for just personal clients. Uh, that last time I did that, I mean, people stayed on like, you know, how people drop off the webinars. Nobody left my webinar. 
you know, like hundred percent attendance, like all the way through and people are still talking about it today. You know, like the people I reached out to afterwards and watched it. I'm like, Hey, I was like, I was like, what did you think? He's like, wow. He was like, you, you helped me solve my problem by talking to that other guy. And I was like, great. It worked then. You know, so that's why, you know, if you're looking to do, if you don't want to make more money or if you don't want to like step apart from the crowd or, or finally, you know, hear from the, you know, the top people that are out there, then I'd say, keep, keep drinking the Kool-Aid or whatever you're having that's keeping you here. But if you want to level up, then it's time to shut up and, and be there. Couldn't have said it any better than that. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I cannot wait for it to start. And Sunday, I'll be there for sure. Look forward to seeing every single one of the speakers. I know, like, I know some of them personally, so it's going to be absolutely, absolutely epic. Thanks. Thanks a lot for being on here. Looking forward to seeing them. Cool. Right. Right. And what, where's the best place as well when people want to get more traffic? Because they did get their, finally got their message right on yeah. how to reach out to you, man. Uh, they can either Facebook chat usually is the easiest way to reach out to me um, or my website, which is rohanchefconsulting.com. I'm sure we'll, I'll get you to put the link somewhere and, and find me there. Or um, Instagram actually has been the huge, huge uh, uh, moneymaker for me recently. So Instagram, you can find me rohan underscore chef. Cool. All right, man. Thanks for sharing. Anytime. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Cheers.